Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Tom's Hardware Show. I'm your host, Sharon Harding, and today we're discussing the new OLED Nintendo Switch, diving into the ASUS ROG Zephyrus M16 gaming laptop, and checking out one of AOC's first gaming keyboards. So we are live, everybody, and we are taking questions from the audience. If you have anything you'd like to ask, just drop your question into the chat on Facebook, YouTube, wherever you're watching this, and we'll try to discuss it live on air. Uh, so joining me today, we have Tom's Hardware staff writer, Wonder, Michelle Earhart. How are you, Michelle? I'm good, Sharon. How are you? Very good. I'm also excited to welcome Tom's Hardware superstar, senior editor, Andrew Friedman. What's going on, Andrew? Hi, Michelle. I'm just hoping we don't get rained on mid-episodes. If you all hear thunder, I apologize in advance. Yeah, getting some thunder over here, too. I'm almost scared. And I could actually see someone on the roof over there right now. Like, you should probably get down. I think New um, York's actually supposed to get some of the hurricane fallout this weekend. We'll, we'll be safe in our little show here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, Andrew. It, I, it put me inside the, these, these four walls with the box I'm on. <laughs> Yes, I feel safe in my little rectangle. Um, so Andrew, I know you're on the news beat for Tom's Hardware this week and you covered an announcement that people have been waiting for for a while, but they may not have gotten quite all they were expecting. Um, so for those who aren't caught up, can you give us a brief summary of what's going on with the Nintendo Switch? Sure, so um, very quietly, well maybe not quietly, but somewhat unexpectedly on Tuesday, Nintendo um, announced a new model of the Switch, the Nintendo Switch, OLED models, they spell that in parentheses, and it is a new $349 version, $349 version rather, coming out in October, and it has a few like quality of life changes. For instance, it has a larger 7-inch screen with an OLED panel, which should be much nicer than the screen on the, here's mine, on the existing one, which is made out of plastic. It has, um, it has Ethernet in the dock for people who are playing somewhat competitively, which is nice you know, for people who are playing a lot of Smash Brothers and you know, they don't want any lag. They're adding a new uh, kickstand. As you can see, the kickstand on the, on the existing Switch is kind of flimsy. The new one actually flips out sort of like a Microsoft Surface on the whole width. And it comes in a really nice white, which I think is cool. But what a lot of people were expecting and what had been rumored for many was what well, sort of a pro Nintendo Switch, you know, a Switch Pro with better graphics, maybe it would even put, output games in 4K. And I think where that's like a lot of the, I don't wanna say anger, but surprise came in for some, is that, you know, the current Switch has this 720p display. And, you know, it's not pretty, but it works. I use it in handheld mode, in handheld mode all the time. This new one, it has a bigger screen, it's OLED, it's got thinner bezels, but it's still 720p. And when you plug it in through the dock into the TV, it's still 1080p, like this current switch is. So for a lot of people like, oh wow, there's no performance change. There's no, like, you know, that really, it went against a lot of the rumor, the rumor mill. And I think that surprised a lot of people who see the switch as older hardware that might be underpowered. And we're really hoping that, oh, okay, I want something that's gonna let me play like the next Zelda game in 4K. And so that caused a bit of a backlash online. Now, whether or not that's deserved, I don't know. The other, the other two big differences, well, really difference and not a difference is one, there's double the storage. It goes from 32 gigabytes to 64 gigabytes of storage, which is still paltry because my cell phone's got more than that. And the battery life is about the same as the existing switch. So what you're getting for the extra $50 over this one is really the display a little bit of extra storage and the components in the dock. Um, Joy-Cons, still the same, um, for better or for worse, will be compatible with what you have, but I hope you don't have to send them in for drift. And the Switch Lite with the Joy-Cons built in that doesn't do TV mode is still just 200. So it's this is $100 more compared it's, to the... It's $50 more. Okay. Um, so yeah, curious, I know Michelle, you do some console gaming Were you, would you say you were disappointed when you got an OLED screen instead of a new chip? I can't say I was disappointed because I wasn't expecting a, a Switch Pro, 
you know, oh, as you far as I, the rumors? I didn't really, as you know, mm -hmm. I review a lot of gaming laptops and even, you know, with these much larger bodies, I have one right next to me that we're going to talk about a little bit later. So this thing, you know, will only run 4K at 60 frames per second. I don't know how you switch that, you know, how you smush that into a switch form factor, keep the price around 250 to $300 and still let it output 4K at, you know, a decent frame rate. Um, you know, you could do 30 frames per second, but, you know, I don't, need 4k for a zelda game or a mario game those for the most part nintendo has been using outdated software um since the wii maybe and it gets or outdated hardware since we maybe yeah. and it gets by through art direction and and game design so i'm not sure why i would expect that to change here you know you could say that you know maybe the switch internals won't change that much and it would still be 720p but then the dock would be able to pump it up to 4K and the dock would have some real, you know, uh, horsepower in it. But that would require an entirely different dock design than the Switch has right now. Because as far as I understand, the way the dock currently works is it just charges it, it just outputs it to the TV. It doesn't make the Switch more powerful in any way. So the kind of changes that people were expecting are things that I would expect from an entirely new console, not from the, uh, the current you know, an upgrade of the current Switch. Nintendo doesn't really want to split its user base uh, by introducing a whole new console right now. If they intended to do that, they would have announced it a long time ago. Um, and, you know, and if you look at the current PC competitors to the Switch, like the GPD Win or whatever, those do 1080p at maybe $800. So, you know, keeping the price point to the amount that people would expect and allowing it to do 4K, even when docked, uh, would be a lot to ask. So this is sort of like, I guess, a mid-life cycle um, upgrade. And Andrew, will they still have all the other, the two other versions available? Yeah, the, the two others, it seems, aren't going anywhere. I mean, okay. I, suppose it's, I suppose it's possible that they could at some point say, hey, we have the Switch OLED and they could phase this one out and keep the Switch light. But at the moment, they're listing them all. And, you know, a lot of people want new hardware and I totally understand why they're excited for it. And I think Michelle hit a lot of those points about why they don't necessarily need to do it. But the other reason they don't need to do it is that Nintendo sold something like 29, 30 million Nintendo Switches this last fiscal year. I know someone who paid like way over MSRP for one of these in the worst of the pandemic, who had like never had a gaming system before because they you know, they wanted to get into it and wanted something to do. There's still huge demand for the Switch as it is. So this OLED model is not really aimed at me who has one already. I mean, I play mostly in handheld mode, it would be nice, but that's not a huge change for me. But if you don't have a Switch and you go into a store this holiday season and you say, you know, I have a family member or a friend who wants the new Switch and and which one should I get? You know, the person at Best Buy or GameStop saying, well, that's the new one. And they're going to hear new and they're going to be like, okay, that's the one I'll get, right? Or maybe they'll say, you know, if you're a more enthusiast like me and like you're, or someone who's getting back into video games, they see that $50 for the nice features. $50 in terms of consumer electronics is not a lot, right? I mean, that's a game for the Switch. So I think it's really just going to push a bunch of units this holiday season. And that's really what it's for. You know, there were reports of improved internals. Who knows? They may have been right at some point. There's also a global shortage going on. Were they planning on something? Maybe. I, I, none, of, none of us really know what's going on in there. But while they could have considered it, they definitely don't need it to keep selling these. There are some games that aren't as good on the Switch as they are in other places. That's not a surprising considering the amount of space, as Michelle pointed out, like the Xbox and the PS5 or a gaming laptop or a desktop pad. But 720p on a screen this size, I'm getting fingerprints all over this, <laughs> could, be, could be so much worse. And I, if I had to completely guess, I would expect that around the time they released the next Zelda, the sequel to Breath of the Wild, which launched this to such great highs, that's when we might see a revision. Again, that's just my guess. And then maybe they'll have a version that also runs on the Switch so they don't leave people behind. Because that's what they did with the GameCube and the Wii with that Zelda game too. 
Yeah, I actually played Breath of the Wild on the Wii U uh, rather than the Switch. I didn't get a Switch until I moved in with my uh, partner who already has a Switch. Um, so I'm typically the type of person who waits for these revisions. Um, if I had not dove in on the Switch until now and this was all I got, I would maybe be a little disappointed. I'm hoping that whatever PS5 Pro we get down the line uh, offers a bit more <laughs> Uh, than this does, but you know, it's not like OLED isn't worth it. I was playing the Switch in port, I usually play the Switch on TV, but I was playing it in portable mode for the first time in a while this weekend. I was playing Hollow Knight, which is a beautiful game, but a pretty dark game. And you know, seeing the, the screen, it's so reflective. Uh, I'd forgotten how reflective it is. It kind of made it hard to navigate around these dark environments. And I wanted to blame the screen, like, you know, blame the controller whenever I got hit. Uh, so I could see an OLED model helping with moments like that. Yeah, you know, if you're someone like Andrew and you play primarily uh, portably. I think Andrew also hit the nail on the head when he said that this is to, you know, sell new units, um, especially, you know, as we move closer to the holidays. Uh, the big new release in Nintendo's lineup seems to be Metroid Dread, uh, which is yes. what a lot of the Switch OLED model uh, commercials really front-loaded with. And white is a big color in Metroid Jet Dread. It's all over Samus's new suit. It's all over what seems to be the key Mr. X style bad guy in that that chases you around. Um, if you're familiar with Resident Evil 2, I would not be surprised to see a white switch oled bundle with metroid dread at some point so we got a couple predictions out there i'm gonna write these down and see if you guys are correct in a few months um but seriously i mean 50 dollars for a bigger screen twice the amount of storage although still not enough storage um and the ethernet i mean that's that's a decent upgrade and things like that you'll notice right away and the kickstand as well like those are things you could take advantage of immediately whether you're really really um, into gaming in the highest frame rates, or if you're just holding it in your hand. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I, mean, I also use it with the TV mostly as well. So I am not too eager to get an upgrade, but for those who use yeah. it, you know, as it's kind of intended, you know, I think you'll see the benefits. Yeah, I mean, that's the, th that's the thing, right? That like, if you use it with your TV, then you're not gonna see the benefits because it's yes. the same, unless you, unless again, unless you're using that ethernet, you're not because that screen is gonna be hidden. So it, it depends who you are. And I do like think when things are bundled in, you know, right now I have the external ethernet connector for the switch. I have it sitting out in my living room, so I'm not gonna go get it, but I have a separate stand that I bought for it uh, because that kickstand is horrible. Um, <laughs> so it will be nice to like, when I travel, I won't have to ask myself, do I wanna play Smash? Do I wanna like put it up on a kickstand and think about packing those things anymore? Um, so Justin Simpson is asking if this will be available for Christmas because they're thinking about getting their daughter one. And so just to reiterate, it's not the Switch Pro. It's the Nintendo Switch OLED if you're going to be looking for it. Um, but Andrew, uh, when is the release date for this again? So the release date, it's October, oh, I want to say 8th. I feel like i got to double check that. Um, it is October 8th. Yes, October 8th, 2021 for $349.99. So in time for Christmas, will you be able to get it is a big <laughs> question. And like, it's a joke, but I'm not joking because yeah. it's impossible to get a PlayStation 5. It's impossible to get an Xbox Series X. It's impossible to get a lot of gaming PC related anything. And frankly, during a lot of the pandemic, the Switch was the hardest one to get of all of them. You know, in that it's somewhat affordable. Nintendo has like a lot of name recognition. And even though this doesn't have any hardware differences, I'm sure people are going to see new Switch and they are going to go for them on eBay. So <laughs> I'd be sure to keep an eye out with your local retailer if they're looking to get one and like sort of get your interest in early. You know, not to go on about the new Switch for so long, but you know, you hit another point that I wanted to talk about, Andrew, when you called it new Switch there, which is that Switch OLED model is such like a tech specs <laughs> specific first name for Nintendo. Like I'm used yes. to new 3DS or 3DS XL or DSi or something. Yes. I, I would expect Nintendo to name their consoles, assuming that the people who are gonna buy them do not know what OLED is. I do think OLED is yeah. becoming a bit more mainstream with it in 
more TVs and more smartphones these days. They're probably trying to ride the coattails of the smartphones getting OLED um, as yeah. well. It almost but looked like I'm an Asus commercial, the, the <laughs> Switch OLED commercial. It's not very exciting, no. They could call it the Switch Deep Black. I don't know. <laughs> With the all white dock. Well, that's <laughs> oh, by the way, the, the white is going around everywhere. There is a version with the black dock and the classic neon controllers. If you're into that, but so yeah, I mean that's sort of the, that's sort of the OLED switch. It's interesting. I think a lot of people are a little disappointed they're not getting their new their next generation right now, but I'm sure that's coming. Yeah. So if you have any more questions or thoughts on the switch that you want to share with us, uh, drop it into the chat. We are all ears or all eyes, whatever you want to say. Um, in the meantime, Michelle, this week you reviewed the Asus ROG Zephyrus M16 gaming laptop, which I'm actually personally curious about because it has a slim build. And in terms of weight, the lighter, the better, if it's something that I'm going to be carrying around at all. So, and on top of that, you know, you get your, your current generation parts, um, you get access to NVIDIA's elusive RTX 3000 series cards, plus an Intel 11th gen CPU. So your version had an RTX 3060 and an Intel Core i9 11900H, and that was for $1,850, $1,850 in the US. Uh, so what else can you tell us about this laptop, Michelle? Sure, uh, well, you just told a whole bunch. No, but I'm kidding. Um, I have it over here right now, and before we start- You're not out, Michelle, you still gotta talk, sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, I have it over here right now, and before we start, I want to show something, uh, which is that when this laptop is in sleep mode, it likes to just constantly blink every couple of seconds, and it's the most annoying thing in the world. I wonder um, is that if that's on like purpose? A, uh, yeah, I wonder if that's like a status light, and if you could change that in the BIOS or in you like can Asus change, software. You can change that in the regular Asus lighting thing. I just don't know why this would be the default thing, and I wanted to show it off on stream. <laughs> it's like... I've had this next to me all day. I haven't bothered to change it. And it's just been like a drop of water, plink, plink, plink. Um, but anyway, onto the laptop itself. Yeah, this is the ROG Zephyrus M16. And it's big, I guess, not gimmick, but it's big point is that this is advertised as a 15 inch chassis, but it's got a 16 inch screen. So the actual screen size that it's got, let me pull it up really quickly is uh, exactly 16 inches, but this chassis is about 14 by 10 inches and about 0 0.8 inches thick, uh, which is pretty small when we compare it to competitors um, like the Alienware M15 Ryzen, which has a 15.6 inch screen, but it's 0 0.9 inches thick, and the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro, which uh, also has a 16 inch screen, but is 1.07 inches thick. Uh, so, you know, you want this laptop if you want something that's as powerful as the other mid-range laptops, um, but is sort of on the smaller end. Uh, however, I think that small size might come with a few compromises. Uh, this performed kind of inconsistently in our benchmarks. So it performed uh, well in games like, um, Sh uh, not Shadow of the Tomb Raider, in games like Grand Theft Auto V and Far Cry, but it performed poorly in Red Dead Redemption 2 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You know, that's kind of hits a good suite of, uh, you know, big open world games, sort of smaller, very intense single player graphics, heavy games and older games. And, you know, it just didn't hit consistent performance like those competitors, the Legion 5 Pro, and the Alienware, and that's a big issue because of this thing's price. Uh, this has about five models currently on ASUS's site, but right now uh, there are only two models that we found that you are able to buy, and we double-checked this with ASUS. They're both on Best Buy. One is $1449, and the other is $1849. And we have the $1849 model, uh, which is pretty expensive, given that it performed only about as well as the Legion 5 Pro, uh, maybe slightly better than the Alienware uh, that we compared it against. But that Alienware cost $1,649 when we reviewed it. Right now it's on sale for $1,371. 
and the Legion 5 Pro costs $18.99, which is about the same price, but has more consistent performance and sort of a better screen, better audio. Although the ROG Zephyrus does have, you know, it does do well in that department. It's got a uh, 1600p screen, 2560 by 1600, which is something the Legion 5 Pro has as well, you know, in that 1610 um, sort of range. But unless you really want that small size, like Sharon said, it's maybe not the most uh, bang for your buck. Yeah, I'm looking at the charts in the review. I have it open now. And it was thought when I first said, like you said reviews poorly, or I mean it benchmarks poorly in some cases. I'm, I'm not sure that's the case. I mean, in that like it's running at almost 60 frames per second on Red Dead, which is punishing. Oh, wow, thunder. Um, and, you know, it seems like it's running well, it's just not running as well. As yeah, I, is, again, which is a I'm, big, yeah. I'd not this say is a thing to mention. Poorly, like you're not like going, I, yeah. When I hear I'd poorly, I'm thinking poorly, like I would say inconsistently. <laughs> yeah, that's um, And given that it costs 18 for, originally I thought this laptop was gonna cost about $200 less and I was prepared to love it. And then I found out that as of right now, the model that we have, which is a strange mix of parts, I think also an i9 and a 3060, but it's like the only high-end version of this laptop uh, that's out there right now, um, costs 1849, which that's at that cute. point, I think I would get the Legion 5 Pro. That's also how, when I was doing the sort of test of the chips at the time, in fact, I think it might have, was this, it, was, it was actually an HK chip that I had, and, it was the same thing in i9 and the 3060, and I don't know if it's Intel pushing that or how much power ASUS gets. But you're right; it's a totally weird mix of parts to put to put together. Like I would rather have more room for heat dissipation for 3070 and go down to an i7 personally. Uh, so speaking of parts, Raj Sakar is asking: Does it have an eight-core processor? They hope it does. How many I don't cores know. Are off, I don't know off the top of my head if the it is an, it is an eight-core processor. Okay. Yeah. I would assume so, thread. but I'd have to, yeah. It has a so, Core i9-11900H. So my question um, you know, for either of you, you both have reviewed a lot of laptops in your lives and this year, um, but I think it's fair to say we're seeing more AMD laptops or AMD appearing in more gaming laptops this year. Um, you would think maybe the, the trend will continue, we'll see. Um, but you know, you mentioned the Legion 5 Pro, Michelle, and I brought that review up. So that has an AMD Ryzen 75800H and an RTX 3070. And you're talking about how you know you thought this machine would be cheaper, and you're disappointed at the performance for the price. So I'm curious uh, for you guys, you know, as you see more value price AMD gaming laptops become available, how is that changing what you expect to get from gaming from a gaming laptop, if at all? Like this one that Michelle has is kind of nuts for the parts. And that the 1850, like I think Michelle did something really smart here. She took what was on the market that you know was sort of in the size and the price range, and she compared it and said, "Look how much more this costs." And that's really all you need to all you need to do there to see it. So like, in that, what are other what are other companies or other stores selling laptops with similar processors or graphics cards? Of what price is that? And you know, in this case, this is more than than those things, and ergo, not that great a deal. <laughs> what do you think, Michelle? Are you starting to expect more from gaming laptops as we get more value options um, introduced? You know, I was looking at, I'm reviewing, no, oh, I can't say it, um, but I've been <laughs> reviewing a lot more uh, AMD laptops recently, and so we've been using a lot more AMD laptops in our comparison testing, and I noticed that I've been using these uh, laptops to compare to largely in this sort of mid-range 1500 to 1800, 1800 is a little on the top end of it, uh, sort of pricing area. Uh, if you go back, you know, even a month ago and look at the sort of 2000 to $3,000 laptops we were reviewing, those were still Intel, but in this sort of, you know, mid-range pricing area, uh, AMD's being incredibly competitive right now, or at least that's what a lot of uh, the brands are releasing. Cause we, we review these as they come out and like the last three or so laptops I've reviewed have been in this sort of price range and have been AMD. 
and this laptop is, uh, Michelle, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's Intel only. Whereas the, their ASUS has its G series, which have been good as we've tested them. We haven't tested them all for uh, for AMD recently, like the G14 last year, which we really like. You know, I, I think this is Intel, Intel only, Intel. but again, we only have yeah. two models out right now. And let me just double check that second 1449 model. Uh, it's got a core i7. So as of right now, you can get this with just Intel. So I mean, so we like, have, oh, there, there is one thing about this design I noticed that I think you'd be making a much bigger deal out, out of Michelle. This is a webcam. <laughs> it's like I joke a little bit, but last like the last two years, Asus took the webcams off of its gaming laptops with the assumption that like if you're going to be using this for streaming or whatever, laptop webcams aren't great. You're going to want to buy your own. And then the pandemic happened, and <laughs> people started you know watching a lot of stuff from home, chat chatting from home, video calling, streaming from home, and suddenly I guess that didn't seem like such a good idea. So I'm really happy that it's back. Like obviously it's a laptop webcam; it's not going to work magic. But I'm glad that they saw, you know, we should bring this back. People use their gaming laptops for things that aren't gaming. So it's just a really important thing to have. And I think we've all seen that over the last year and a half. Yeah, yeah I, have like, an uh, Asus, I have an Asus Tough Dash um, right here with no webcam. So. so let me see if I can get it. Oh, the, the bumper is blocking me, but you have a webcam right there, there in the top bezel with microphones on either side. And Andrew's right, you know, in the past Asus has either ditched those webcams. Uh, some companies have gone for the nose cam solution, uh, which is like when a webcam is down here and shoots up at your nose in a really awkward, unflattering angle. And you know, the webcam quality in this isn't great. Uh, it only performs well, sort of like when you're not in low light, not in saturated light, and even then you're still gonna get some artifacts, but it's definitely better than nothing. And I think especially with Windows 11 restrictions seeming to look really awkward, it's possible you might need a webcam to install that. Do I, have I read that right? I think they're saying starting in 2023 or so, a certain laptops would require, or certain non-desktop devices would require it. But we're not 100% sure on that. My assumption would be they're encouraging people who make laptops, tablets, and all-in-ones with Windows to all have webcams. So this would be a few years ahead of the trend. I'm just glad it's back. But yeah, I uh, like you said, people use their gaming laptops for things that aren't gaming. I primarily do that because I think a gaming, is, gaming laptops usually have a lot of power um, and tend to be cheaper than productivity laptops. So if you don't mind a little bit of the gamery aesthetic, as much as I hate that flashing sleep light that I mentioned earlier, which again, you can turn off, but is kind of emblematic of the way gaming laptops are presented. Um, you can, you know, get kind of a bargain by going for gaming. So we have some questions from our viewers um, on the laptop, Michelle. First from Guillermo Araya. Can you talk about the build quality and quality control? Sure. Uh, so that actually brings me to a really great point. This design is, you know, it's what ROG does. It has this sort of slit down that not a, it's not like a physical slit, but it has this sort of slash down the center of the top. And then it has these sort of uh, dots all over the top that kind of make a holographic image. If you look at it from different angles, uh, like old Pokemon card, it's got vents on either side. It's got this nice slim body, uh, which is like the biggest selling point of this laptop. Uh, it feels great and hefty and solid in the hands, uh, feels metal. Uh, one thing that I don't like is the way the ethernet port is on the laptop's left side, kind of juts out a little bit there at the bottom. Some laptops I've reviewed have a sort of jaw that opens up so you can put the uh, cable in and then closes up around it pr to, present that from, to prevent that from happening. Um, and then you've got this back with vents and uh, status lights on it. One thing that does bother me that I had to um, deal with when I was upgrading this is normally to upgrade a laptop, you would just remove these center screws. This one has rubber stoppers, or you would just remove these outer screws. This one has center screws that you also need to remove. And these center screws have rubber stoppers over them. And uh, they can be a little bit hard to get out without mangling and then put back in. Uh, you know, uh, right now I have them placed back in as best as I can. 
it won't necessarily show up on the webcam, but they're not completely flush. Um, and that annoys me a little bit. It's not something that I see, but uh, it can affect the way that the, uh, the laptop sits. You know, this isn't something that you're not gonna come across as an issue if you're not upgrading your laptop. But uh, I do wish they just gave me immediate access to the screws if I'm gonna have to take them out anyway. Oh, righty. And Michelle, your um, laptop has 2560 by 1600 resolution and a 165 hertz refresh rate. Um, so Nikhil S. Joseph is asking, don't you think 165 hertz is a bit overkill for a 3060? So I mentioned that in my review. Uh, to oh. test this sort of refresh rate, I uh, played Overwatch on it. Uh, I didn't benchmark it. I just wanted to see how well the laptop keeps up with the action there. Uh, Overwatch is like a five year old game, um, but in order to run it at a frame rate that would actually hit 165 FPS on this laptop, I had to reduce my specs down from ultra, which is what I've taken to playing on normally to low, um, which is a little disappointing on, on a new laptop with such an old game. It's not necessarily a deal breaker, um, given that a lot of sort of competitive players play on low anyway, because it keeps their focus on the action and it actually gets rid of some blocking geography, like some trees aren't there anymore or whatever. Um, but you know, if you want to your game to look like it's running on an RTX card, you're gonna wanna pump those specs up and then yeah, 165 Hertz is a little bit overkill. Uh, Andrew did mention to me that you know some people will drop their uh settings down to 720p even uh at which point you know 165 hertz might be a, a little bit better but i could almost do with this being a 144 hertz screen and then like bringing that cost down a little bit yeah, the one thing i wonder about that that i didn't think about that when, when you were writing your review is that this is also a 16 by 10 laptop and i haven't compared all of the 16 by 10 laptops i'm glad they're going that way i like my screen's a little taller personally. But I am wondering with the component shortage and apparently displays are heavily affected also, was that just what they could get? Was 165 Hertz the only mm. 16 by 10 they could get? And that's, I don't know, but it's definitely a possibility. I think a lot of gaming laptops in general have overkill. You see like, even when you get a 3080, I think for a lot of people, 300 Hertz is absolutely overkill. So, I mean, I guess you're getting extra. I agree with Michelle. I would. I would say if you could drop it a little bit and save the, and save it's great. But again, in a component shortage, I'm just glad I could go to, to bestbuy.com right now and like find an add to cart button. So I'll t if that's what they have to do to get it, I suppose that's one way. That's true. It, it's the funny how hertz. we're like, oh, we could deal with 144 hertz. Remember when that used to be like balling to get 144 hertz and I were like, <laughs> Yeah, I would settle for that. <laughs> that would be good enough, I guess. <laughs> um, great. So I just dropped a link um, for Michelle's review into the chat. So definitely check it out if you're interested. And if you have any more questions, put them in. We'll try to answer it today on air. Um, in the meantime, you know, I always love to give you guys a sneak peek of, you know, some of the things we're testing here at Tom's Hardware. So <laughs> I think it's time to see what's in the lab. Da, da, da. That was a real sound effect. That was <laughs> so. I still, love, I, got, I still love the Shakespeare in the park font we got going on there. <laughs> <laughs> we got to keep it classy here, you know. <laughs> um, so I'm actually extra excited to be able to show this to you today on the keyboard I am testing because it actually got stolen from me once. Someone got access into my building and was took the keyboard out of the box before I could get to it. So I'm just really happy that I have a physical keyboard oh, wow. to show you guys. I, I remember did get a second you talking one. about that. Yeah, so this is a little personal to me. So give me one second, we're gonna adjust my camera and bring it up. Let's get on the big screen here. So what I have here is um, the AOC Aegon AGK 700. Now this is one of AOC's first gaming keyboards. They have another cheaper option uh, with red switches um, available. This is the pricier one. It's going for $180 right now. And yes, before anyone asks, there is RGB here. It's doing this weird effect on camera. 
um, that it doesn't do in real life, but there are RGB effects and you can see that I'm toggling through them um, with a dedicated key here. But what you're probably also looking at is this monstrous volume knob here. Um, most of the people I've showed this keyboard to, that's the first thing they point out, Andrew included. Yeah. Um, and as you can see, like it spins as you'd expect of a volume knob and I could press it in, but out of the box, pressing it in actually doesn't do anything. I would think it would mute it, but there's actually a dedicated mute button all the way over there. So I don't know. And like, I wish it was also on the right cause that's kind of what I'm used to, but to be fair, it is within range. Like if I was typing, it's within reach. So we'll see as I'm testing it, if maybe I get more used to it, um, time will tell. Um, so what else do we have? We have some extra keys here um, as well. Kind of funky. They're not. I'm not able to reprogram them out of with the software just yet. AOC says they it is programmable. So I don't know if there's an error going on with my software. I'll be checking into that as well. But as it stands now, um, we have this button here toggling RGB effects. This um, is the brightness for the RGB on or off. And you can toggle through the preset effects. Um, and again, it doesn't look like we're in an alternate dimension in real life. If you had this keyboard, I don't know what the weirdness there is. Um, you also have this key here for disabling um, the Windows key to get into game mode, as some people call it. We have a button to launch the home page of your web browser, another one to switch the functions of WASD and the arrow keys, and then this button launches Groove Music. So I really hope they're programmable because I do not need a dedicated key for launching Groove Music. <laughs> um, we also have some keys over here. You can toggle through your stored profiles with this M key and you get five dedicated G keys, which I'm glad to see. Um, those are often pricier key keyboards that have those uh, G keys and this is 180. So I'm glad to see it here. Um, as you could see, if you look really closely, maybe you could see the detailing. Here, let's check it out over here. The detailing of that aluminum alloy top plate. This is all a pretty hefty keyboard. And you also get this hefty um, braided cable here. It's pretty chunky, red and black to match the red knob. And it actually has two USB type A connectors because there is a USB pass-through port um, on the keyboard. Um, so you also get a leather wrist rest here. It is detachable. Um, it just snaps on like that. Not too bad. Um, we'll see how it fares. It's not like very flat, but it, it is a little plush. We'll see how, how it goes after I really get to using it. And as of right now, this is only available with, um, let's see, cherry blue switches. So this is going to be allowed clicky keyboard. There are no other options as it stands. So I know not all gamers are fans of the clicky blue switches. So we'll definitely be testing this out as well as, you know, how it feels in this specific keyboard with the keycaps and the, the build and the design and whatnot. Um, so yeah, that is just a preview of the keyboard as I'm setting my camera back up but um, I will be testing it more deeply over the coming days. So if you have any questions or things you'd like me to test, let me know. But in the meantime, I'd love to hear what my, my colleagues here think about the keyboard so far. Andrew, you look like you have some thoughts. Yeah, I mean, that, that dial is a lot. I mean, A, I agree <laughs> with you. I wish it were in, on the right or even on the left. I think it's just better placement. But yet, like, it just, it looks like it's at high school and really needs to see a dermatologist. And I think each time you're hitting it, it's actually launching a nuke. Like, <laughs> like it's like Homer Simpson's guarding it. Like that's his sole job <laughs> is to prevent the nuclear meltdown that occurs when you hit that, that panic button. It's like, it's oh, actually somebody said, and I see somebody said in our comments, it's a panic button. So great minds, but you're like, <laughs> it looks like some like really important button. And the fact that it doesn't do anything, like it doesn't do anything when you press it is just weird. I think, it's a sheer, it's a weird sheer amount of buttons to have all of those shortcuts and like groove music and your homepage. Like those, those two seem really dated to me. And like, I feel like are things that could go on those macro keys, but mm -hmm. on the bright side, at least they're not getting rid of the macro keys in favor of those. You do get both. So if you do find a way to reprogram, I guess it's extra macro keys, right? 
Yeah, I kind of agree with Andrew. He hit almost all of my points. Uh, I think the red color also on that wheel is kind of ugly. Uh, it looks like a pimple in the middle of the keyboard. Uh, I would also rather have it on the right, at least, where I can ignore it. Uh, that's also where most volume wheels tend to be on laptops. Uh, or not lap. I, I'm in a laptop mindset on <laughs> keyboards. Uh, I think the font also, I don't remember specifically, but I think it was kind of like big and blocky, a little boring, a little ugly. Uh, I don't need a home page or groove music button. I would prefer more macro buttons. And uh, blue isn't my favorite switch type, but that comes down to, you know, your personal taste. I like, I, I'm gonna be the contrarian, I like blues. So if they wanna do blues, it's fine. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm, I've got nothing against yeah. blues. Um, I like having a variety. And horror, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I like there being a variety of options. I mean, if I was a business person as well, I would want to have more options. I think it would sell better, but obviously there's money that goes into that as well. But I, what I am finding, I thought I like blue switches too. And I still do, I'm not gonna give up, but they feel quite stiff at least um, in the day that I've been using this keyboard so far. I think it's because I've been using Razer Green switches most recently, which are a bit lighter um, in terms of how much force they need to depress. Yeah. So I'm starting to get like a little like tired as I'm typing and the space bar is very, very stiff. It actually gets jammed currently. So I'm gonna have to play around with that and see what's going on there. Um, it could be something with the build, I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll be testing it a lot. I'm sorry, it's complexion just got got annihilated here. Everyone's saying it looks like it's breaking out, needs some clear cell, but I'm gonna give it a shot. I do um, wonder so if you could like buy an aftermarket knob and replace it or something like that with something <laughs> smaller or, like, or black or you know something. Yeah. I mean, if you like red, this is certainly a consideration. They got the red and black down. Yeah, you know, I, like red, I thought I like red, red was black. my favorite color but after seeing this <laughs> keyboard. <laughs> so we have some comments a lot. No, Nobody likes the volume button. Nikhil, Nikhil S. Joseph says it looks ugly. Um, they also say they didn't know AOC made keyboards. Um, yeah, their monitors are much more popular. So again, yeah, they just, um, this is their first time getting into keyboards. There's one other model that I don't know the name off the top of my head, but it lacks media keys, so it's cheaper. And it also has red linear switches. So I guess they're starting off with one red and one blue right now. So yeah, this is um, kind of their first foray into the keyboard space. Um, Ruru2M, nice to see you. I don't know if you're joking or not, but it is not a themed keyboard. Ruru2 is asking if it's 80s retro theme. I mean, in its functionality out of the box, you're also probably getting that vibe as well. But um, I am, again, going to see if it's programmable. There seems to be, I don't know, I wasn't able to do it. We'll see if there's a mix-up there. And Nyan Punikar says, it's a keyboard version of Nintendo controllers. I guess that aggressive red. It almost, if only uh, it was a joystick or something, huh? I think, yeah, they might be referring to, like, either, like, the original Nintendo had those red buttons and the Nintendo 64 controller had that big red start button in the middle. Oh, yeah, yeah, and again pressing this big red button in doesn't do anything out of the box. So no, not too much fun. Glue a Funko Pop on the volume knob, suggests Ruru2M. You guys are very creative. I was just gonna see if I could get used to its middle positioning, but you guys have better ideas. Um, great, I, so I like I I wonder if you could like stretch your fingers from like the WASD keys, be like, no, don't wanna take my hands off the keys, wanna adjust the volume. <laughs> No, I think I could do it with my right hand where I keep it on JKL and such. Um, but no, at least not with my dainty lady hands. But I actually do have big hands for a woman. So to be give you a more realistic um, measurement there. So yeah, like I said, I'll be testing this. So keep your eyes on tomshardware.com for my final review. It's going to be a great review. You're going to love it. Um, in the meantime, I looks like we got through all the questions questions, I believe. Um, so thank you to everyone who's been watching. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel or Twitch channel. And you can also listen to the show as a podcast if you desire. Um, for more information on the OLED Nintendo Switch, check out tomshardware.com. And you know what? I'm going to give you guys a link to that piece right now in the chat because Andrew Friedman wrote it. It's some great reporting. I'll give you all the information you need. Michelle's Asus RG, Zephyrus, 
M16. M16. <laughs> that gaming <laughs> lab. <laughs> Michelle's tested that. The link is there. Um, check out that review for full benchmarks and all that good stuff. Thank you to Michelle and Andrew for stopping by. Hope you guys had a good time. Thanks that for is having our us. Show. We'll see you next Thursday.